Okay, today I'm going to talk about replacing this guy, which is your water heater's pressure relief valve. Now, for those who don't know, this valve is essentially designed to never be used. It is only to be used in the event of an emergency where you're getting overly hot water creating steam pressure in your water heater. And the reason I need to replace this is because down here you see this little drip. And uh, that means that this valve, which is a spring-loaded valve, has failed in some way inside. Um, I'm very disappointed in this. This water heater is from 2014, and uh, so it's really not that old. Um, when I was growing up, people would never replace these. I mean, in reality, this part should outlive the water heater. If your water heater lasts 10, 12, 13 years, this should realistically have a service life of no less than 20 years. But, you know, we can't make uh, quality stuff anymore. So here we are, uh, you know, seven years later, and this thing's uh, obviously failed. So as you can see, it's dripping uh, pretty good. So fortunately, it's not that big of a deal to change these things out. And the first thing you're going to want to start with is uh, turn your water heater down to the pilot setting. So um, you stop, you know, you don't want the burner to come on while you're doing this to heat the water. So that's your first step. Set it down to the pilot setting so you're not heating. Find your drain valve. So right now you've got water up to the top of this thing. This is your cold water inlet. You're going to want to turn that off your step two so you've got water up to here and you need the water to be down to here so uh, you're gonna want to drain all of this and it doesn't hurt to do that um, just to rinse like wash some of the sediment out of the tank <clears throat> also if you're gonna do this some water heaters have what they call an anode now I'm sure this one has an anode inside of it but most of them you're gonna have a kind of a little look like a large bolt it'll look like a large screw um, and that's your anode which you want to replace periodically because that helps your tank from rusting on the inside it minimizes that so step one turn it down to pilot step two uh, turn off your cold water inlet and then uh, we'll get cracking on this okay so your step three is going to be to connect a garden hose to that bottom valve and run that hose outside um, to drain. If you can't run it outside to drain, remember you only need to get rid of this much water, which is only a few gallons, so um, you can uh, progressively turn this on, put like a little bucket underneath it or something, a way to catch the water, and little by little you can drain it down to the level that you need. Alright, so this is what you're gonna need. As far as I can tell, you're really only going to need about two tools. Pipe wrench or uh, maybe like an adjustable wrench, a pair of vice grips, whatever you have. And then a cartoonishly large screwdriver. No, you won't really need one that big. Let's get this out onto a tray. Nice. Alright, so um, I'm going to turn on the water flow. Way. So you can take your screwdriver and start cranking on this. And it's not on there all the way. Make sure your garden hose is on there all the way. You may want to have some rags or something on standby here because chances are you're going to make a little bit of a mess. Or a lot of bit of a mess. Okay, so you're gonna want to get that garden hose on there more than hand tight. Um, you're gonna want to take your wrench and just kind of snug that down real good. Uh, I've got a real tight, tight spot here to work. I got a tub right next to this uh, heater, so I can't really get to it very easily. Let's try that again. 
So yeah, bring a shop vac. Because if it's gonna go wrong, this is where it's gonna go wrong, is draining this out. Oh, come on. Hmm, that's odd. Okay, you may not hear water rushing out. I think I have that open. And then you can open this valve up to let water in, which is going to get water to the top, help you drain out the bottom. All right, as, as you can see here, I got this out in the yard. It's got water coming out of it. And I don't see any, any debris inside of it, so that's good. If you see a lot of debris inside the water, um, if the water's real dark or nasty, um, your tank is probably probably kind of corroded real bad from the inside, so uh, that'll be a telltale sign that your water tank may not have a whole lot, lot of life left in it. Okay, so after it's drained for a while, um, remove the hose, and you're going to want to make sure this valve is closed. Now, turning this valve to the right opens it up. See that? and turning it to the left also opens it up. So, as usual, it's a shitty design valve. So you see now I have it turned just right to where it's not leaking. So, once you disconnect the hose, make sure you've got this little part turned in a way where it is no longer leaking at all. Okay, next step, you're going to want to remove this. This down downspout piece. Uh, none of this should be on there uh, very tight, so when you reassemble it, there's no need to go crazy on it. Just snug. Alright, so it should be turning pretty easily. And just remove this piece. You'll save it, reuse it, don't bother buying a new one. Okay, now that you have removed that downspout, you're going to want to gently move this. Now again, it shouldn't be on there that snug. This one's really frozen up, unfortunately, so I'm going to need both hands to get this done. Okay, so make sure you have a pipe wrench handy. You may need it. There we go. This one is on there way too tight. When you install this back into place, it should not be torqued down that much. Okay, I forgot to mention something. So, before you take this thing out, if you can read it, read what it says on it. It'll have some numbers, the manufacturer. Um, this one says 150 to 210 degrees. I don't know if you can read that or not. Uh, these are all going to be pretty similar, so you really can't go wrong with the replacement part. But try to match it up as, as close as you can. Um, this one's a different... Um, brand but as long as your um, so these are typically going to be three quarter inch NPT thread um, just make sure you have the right thread and it is rated for a hot water system some of these are rated only for a cold water system so you're going to want a hot water system rated one not that it makes that big of a difference and in a pinch you can put a plug in this and just plug it off all together that's not a safe recommendation but in a pinch you can do that temporarily so here's the new one as you can see there's a spring-loaded valve in there and here's the old one it's all kinds of nasty in there um, see how it's got a bunch of buildup in there um, but again these things are designed to essentially never open if your water heater is operating correctly this will never open it's only for safety so Really, this should outlast the life of the unit. It really should. But anyway, go get yourself a replacement and just uh, thread it back in. This one has some pipe uh, tape on it. Um, I'm going to put a little additional pipe tape on it just to be on the safe side. Um, another thing, don't buy the cheap, like, 
like Dollar Tree brand or Walmart brand, go to Lowe's or Home Depot or a plumbing supply and get a quality tape. It actually makes a big difference. This stuff seals the other stuff. It's kind of trash or you can get the liquid variety. Okay, I put a little extra tape on this. Uh, clean out any gunk you may have in here. As you can see, there's a little bit of debris and just uh, gently make sure it threads on there. Like I said, this really shouldn't take a lot of effort. Um, you're not going to need to crank this down. Just make sure that it's snug. Okay, I have snugged this down. You can reconnect that pipe if you want to. It's not really a necessity because again, this thing should never be functioning um, under normal conditions. So go ahead, turn on your cold water inlet. It's going to start filling it up. You can help it along by giving it a little bit of air relief because again, you're trapping all the air. You're trapping air up in here as, you, as it's refilling. So letting the air out with this valve is going to help. And double check down here, make sure this valve is not leaking because if you forget about this and it's dripping, you're going to have a bad time. And you can see it's got some pressure building. And now you can tell the water level is slowly coming up. There you go. So as soon as that starts dripping, the water has come up to this level and is now filling up properly. So you're pretty much done. Now you can go back, set your heater to the uh, level that you want. Also, you may be noticing this is actually a sealed heater. Um, I've had some issues with this water heater, and so that stupid little panel here with this little sight glass, you can't see crap through it once these things are a couple years old so um, I just removed it and guess what it works just fine and nothing exploded so I'm not saying it's the right thing to do I'm just saying that's how I do it and again keep an eye on this drain valve see I just saw a little drip come out of it you're gonna want to make sure that that is a thousand percent sealed up if you want, you can actually put a cap over that too to be extra safe. And that's about it.